Have you ever wondered how people create that glowing halo effect around their subjects and their thumbnails? Well, in today's video, you're going to learn how to do that and some other tips to help your thumbnail pop. I've put time-coded chapters down below so you can skip around and find what you need. For now, let's jump on in. So it's been a while since we've done a Photoshop tutorial on this channel because we mainly focus on video editing and production tips. But ironically, the two best performing videos on this channel are both Photoshop tutorials. So as you know, if you're a creator, you need to be able to wear multiple hats and have lots of skills. So if my thumbnail designer isn't ready, I need to be able to go in and put together a design inside of Photoshop. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm in Photoshop 2024 and we're going to click on new file. And from here, we're going to start from the film and video tab, 1920 by 1080. And over here, you want to check on artboards so, so that, that way you, you can, can create, create multiple designs. designs. For color mode, keep it the same. For background contents, I like to make this transparent because it's just useful when working with different layers and we can keep it untitled. You can give it a name later. Let's go ahead and click create. So now we have our empty artboard and now it's time to put in the photo that you're going to use for your thumbnail. Now I often record a video of me like doing different reactions like generally if you're a thumbnail designer you might receive a movie file and you can take screenshots of that video file and then you're just going to import that still into your artboard here and press enter and we're done. Just kidding, still a lot more to go. Okay, so the first step is to remove anything that we don't want featured in the thumbnail. So for example, I'm wearing this lav microphone here. Let's use generative fill to get rid of that. So we can go over to the lasso tool here and we can just draw around this microphone and then select generative fill and just generate, keep it empty to just remove that microphone. I think this one is the most natural. You can also generate more if you like but I think this one works pretty good. Now we have this mask covering up that lav mic and my image. So let's select both of these layers and put it into a group. And then we can go up to filter and convert for small filters. Now this turned it into a smart object again. So if I double click on this, you can see now that we have our mask plus the image in one group. It's all contained almost like a nest in Premiere Pro in this one layer. And the reason why I did that is because we're going to be masking this image and you don't wanna have that generative fill layer there because it's gonna cause a lot of headache and problems for you later on. Okay, now it's time to select our subject. So let's click on select subject here and then we can click on mask. And you can see now we have our mask in the black and white. So what we can do here is just clean this up because you can see the edges are not perfect. So I've actually made a tutorial on how to remove the background with complicated wispy hair, which you can watch right up here. For the sake of this, I'm just going to subtract those wispy hairs from my mask. So you can see here, there's these handy buttons, subtract from mask and add to mask. And so, you know, it's good to have, you know, almost zero hardness and you can play around with the size depending on how zoomed in you are. You can always press control or right click to change this at any time in the frame, which is useful. So I'm just gonna go through really quickly and subtract from the mask and add to the mask around the edges where I think it needs to be added back in. Okay, so this is looking pretty clean. So now we're going to add a background behind me. Now you can just do a quick Google search and find the background that you wanna add there, but a lot of those images are copyright protected and you don't want any legal issues, right? So I use Envato Elements for all my photos and graphics. Of course, my team and I use it for other things like stock video as well. So I'm actually gonna to go to graphics here and search for space, planet. I like space images. So I really like this one here. And what we can do here is just click on download. These are just JPEG files and you can save it directly to your project or create a new project to get a license for it. And one thing I want to note about Envato Elements is that it's very creator friendly. For example, their monthly price is really reasonable and their annual price is even better. So you can download as much as you want and use it in your projects and you don't have to worry about any copyright 
issues. And actually, Invato set you up with a 70% off discount your first month. Go try it out, which I've linked to below. So thank you, Invato, for sponsoring this part of the video. I think you guys will really like it. So let's drag in our background image and let's make it bigger. And now let's just scale it into place. Press enter once you're done and let's move this behind my head. And now we can take my head and we can, you know, think about where we want it to be. Let's maybe scale it up a little bit because remember for thumbnails, you want it to be not too far away, not too close up either. We can always play around with this, but I think here is good because I want to add text on the side that says like glowing warp with an arrow and put the Photoshop logo behind me. I also wanna show you how to change the color of the glow in the background. And to do that, there's a couple different ways, but the easiest way is first to select the background layer and select the subject. And essentially I'm just going to click on invert. And then from this little handy menu here, there's three dots and let's invert the mask. And then I'm going to duplicate the background because we need it without the mask. And let's just click on the mask and delete it. So on this top layer, we can actually go to effects and choose color overlay. And in this case, we can choose like a pink color. You can choose whatever color you want and make sure to change it to a different blend mode. Let's do overlay. And then we can reduce the opacity slightly and press OK. Another thing we can do, just like before, is merge these clips together, but rather than merging, we can select both of them and create a group. And now we can right click on this and convert to smart object. And now we can add a, a slight blur to this background, right? So let's go ahead and go up to filter, go to Gaussian blur, maybe add about two and a half, 2.6, that's fine. Just so it's a little bit more in the distance behind me. And now let's start with our very first rim light. Let's go down here to this icon and let's click and let's select curves. And now with the curves, we're going to use this RGB curve to increase the brightness. So just click around the center and just pull it up. And I know that you're probably like, yeah, this looks terrible. Like you're very overexposed. But just trust me here because we're going to mask just the edges. So from here, we need to apply this just to our image. So you can select option on a Mac or alt on a PC and click between these layers. And this just applies it to our head, not the background. And now we need to select our subject again to limit the curves just to the rim of the subject. So we're going to press command or control on a windows and select to select our selection. <laughs> so now that we have our selection, we can click here on our little menu to contract selection, or we can go up to select and we can go to modify contract. And we want to create the basically the gap from the border of our subject that we want to add a rim light to. And basically we're going to add this contracted mask to the curves layer. To do that, press option delete or alt delete on windows. And now you can see that we have this kind of basic stroke around the edges of our subject. It doesn't look very good, right? So let's deselect here and let me show you how to make it look better. With this selected, go up to properties and now let's add some feathering. So when I increase this, look what happens. Look how just adding around 8.5 made it look so subtle. So this is a great way to do kind of a basic rim light and you can always play around with the feathering until it looks about right. And what's really cool is because this is a mask, you can go in and remove parts that just don't look good. For example, if I want to subtract from the mask, you can go in here and you can just start to remove that. And if you ever want to add it back in, you can just add to that mask. Another thing that we might want to do is add some color here to our rim light. So let's go ahead and let's just choose a blue light. And we can always change this color again and let's increase the size and let's just click behind me here. And now let's create another layer and let's do the same thing, but with white this time. So 
just like we did with the curves, we're going to create another mask, but with a blue solid color. And once again, let's press Option or Alt on a Windows to select it to limit it just to our subject. Now we could do what we did last time with the curves where we contract the mask and then apply it to our color fill, or we can just go in here and we can just subtract from our mask just by clicking like this. So I'm gonna go through here and just subtract until it looks about right and then I'll meet you back. The coolest part about this method is you can always go back in and add the blue color at any time. So even if you make a mistake, you can always go in and, and make changes here. On this side, I'm going to add pink. So I'll just remove the blue on this side. To make it more natural looking, you can actually click here next to the layer, double click, and you can blend it with the underlying layer, which is the image itself. So what you can do is press Alt or Option on a Mac, and you can see how it separates this. You can see it just blends it in nicer with the layer so it looks more natural. You can also adjust the opacity too if you don't want it to be as intense. So now let's add a Photoshop logo behind me. Let's drag and drop our Photoshop logo and move it in place behind me. Let's just make it a little bit smaller. Before I adjust it further, I'm actually going to make a glow on the PS. So I'm gonna go back to my paintbrush tool, create a new layer. So let's select like a bright blue color and let's make our brush size bigger. And let's just click once and then I'm going to press Alt Option to connect this paint layer to just the Photoshop logo. And then we'll change the blend mode to vivid light. So now it just makes the Photoshop logo pop a little bit more, just like we did before. Select both of these layers, turn it into a group. We can turn this into a smart object or we can just you know, select these layers and we can right click and link the layers if you wanna do it that way. And now we can just reposition the logo, maybe rotate it slightly and put it just peeking behind my shoulder here. On the PS logo, we can also add an outer glow and an inner glow. So just a subtle amount, I think is good. Okay, so we have inner glow and outer glow on the Photoshop logo. So there's two more things to the glow that I wanna do. I wanna add more of a white around the edges and a little bit of pink on the left side of my face from the background. So first let's start with more white here. We're going to create another solid color. This time we're gonna do white. And now I'm going to select the mask and press Command click to make the selection. And then up to select, modify, contract. And this time we'll do 20 pixels. So we have more to work with. And then on this layer, let's press Option, Delete. And once again, we can go up here to Properties and this time add some feathering. Now we need to deselect our selection and then we need to select our mask and now let's just go in and paint away the stuff that we don't want. But remember, this is YouTube. So we want it to be a little bit exaggerated with the thumbnail. We really want it to be popped. And remember, we can also double click and do that underlying layer thing which is what Rickard, my thumbnail designer, taught me how to do, which is just great. Just a subtle amount, I think is good. And the reason why I'm doing this again, it's not 100% necessary, right? Because if I turn this off, we still have a little bit of the white halo, right? But I wanted to add a little bit more just for some intensity purposes. It is a little bit more work, it just depends on your flow. All right, so let's select our subject. Let's choose a pink color. So we can kind of click here where we want to add some light and then double click and let's use this underlying layer technique. I'm going to reduce opacity to about 90. And then I can also use the eraser tool to remove stuff that I don't want. And see how I painted on my face here just to get a subtle amount of pink. And I think it's starting to shape up. I'm also gonna add in a little bit of mixture of blue here to add on the sides because there is a little bit of blue here. So we can kind of paint that with our color fill selected. Now we can always make some adjustments here, 
But let's select on our photo and let's add the camera raw filter just to make it pop more and add more contrast. I want to reduce the highlights slightly, add some contrast, just overall add just a slight amount of detail and some vibrancy too and press OK. And because this is a smart filter, we can always go in later on and double click on this to open it up. So now it's time for the final touches. To add some dynamism here, let's add some dust particles from Envato Elements. So I just searched dust particles and I like these ones here. I'm gonna try this and let's download these. Before we add the dust particles that we downloaded, select our background layer and now we can drag the dust particles in and that way it's not going to mess up our layers let's make it a little bit bigger and now let's change the blend mode to screen to get rid of the black and that is looking pretty good here let's scale this up we can add a gaussian blur just like before just a subtle amount press ok one thing i like to do with thumbnails is add like an arrow pointing to show the viewer kind of what the video is about so going back you got it, to graphics from Envato Elements, you can search for something like Simple Arrow, and you can see that you can get all these cool packs of arrows that you can save. So let's try these basic icons here. Let's take this arrow that we downloaded and let's drop it here. Let's reposition it so it's pointing at the glow and let's add a color overlay on the arrow. So let's go over here and let's click on effects and do color overlay. And let's change this to like a bright yellow color, not overlay blend mode. Let's do normal. Okay. And it's behind our lighting, which we don't want. So let's bring this up and we want this to be above everything, I think. So up at the top, and then we can add some text. In this case, I want it to be glow warp. And instead of it being just one line, I'm going to type out letter by letter. I know it seems kind of time consuming, but really it's not that time consuming. Let's click on G for our first letter. Let's scale it up. And actually the background is too high. To bring down our background layer, let's lock the particles so it doesn't get in the way. And then we can click and bring this down a bit lower. So there's more space for our letters, right? So this is our first one and let's rotate it slightly. Press Option or Alt to duplicate it. Let's do L for glow, and then I'll rotate this one and repeat for all the letters. So now I can select all of these and create a group. And on the group, we can call this glow. And on this glow, we can go to layer, layer style, and choose an outer glow. And this arrow, let's add a drop shadow to it. Again, layer, layer style, drop shadow just so it pops more. So then above this, I'm going to add the word wrap as well, the same way that I did with the glow. And here is the final effect. I added about 20 points of vibrancy and I also added a curves adjustment just to add some more contrast. As some final touches, you can also go in and you can do some skin smoothing. If you wanna see the final project file, you can become a patron and download the actual PSD file where you can go in and see all the layers that we did and the final touches that Rickard is going to add to this as well. And if you want a separate video where we show you how to do the skin smoothing effect and some other tricks in Photoshop, if this video reaches 5,000 likes, we'll make a video on that. So let us know if you want some more Photoshop tutorials. So I hope that this was useful for you. Again, Photoshop. If you want more of it, let me know. Thumbnails are super important to YouTube because it helps inform the viewer what your video is going to be about and make it look attractive. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And as always, keep creating better video and photo with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Ooh.